Hello everyone, welcome to KJB Bible Stories. Today we have here our continuation in the book The Law of Life by E.J. Wagner. Today we are starting on page 77 and we are in the sixth commandment which says Exodus 20 verse 18 Thou shalt not kill. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you may come and teach us and guide us. Help us, O Lord, not to just get the letter of the law, but to understand the spirituality and the demands of the law, and that this carnal kind of flesh cannot do it on its own, but only with your strength and with your Holy Spirit abiding in us. Save us and teach us and guide us in Jesus' holy name. Pardon our sins. Amen. Okay, once again, my wife said we were dealing with the sixth commandment. And remember, the law is broad, so there's right now we're understanding the letter and we're also understanding what? The spirituality of the law. When he's gone through this book, he's just right now, he's just saying, how can this law be broken in other matters? When, like, for example, the commandment that thou shalt not kill is not just actually killing someone that they actually die. We've seen so far, it, you can do it by how you treat your neighbor, how your attitude is towards someone, if you're, if you're uh, angered towards someone, is killing everything. So there's many ways to break this law. That's what we're learning right now. I'm going to have my wife continue reading. <clears throat> what self-defense involves? Some will say, page 78, but we are never the aggressors. We do not fight except in self-defense to maintain our rights, and we do not believe in fighting under any other conditions. It seems to be almost universally accepted that people must defend themselves and their rights, although we have the assurance that, Psalms 140 verse 12, the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. And he says, Romans 12, 19, vengeance is, vengeance is what? Mine, our repay. So whoever thinks that he must defend himself or avenge his own wrongs, takes upon himself the work that belongs to God alone, and shows that he thinks that he is better able to manage his own case than the Lord is. Let us see what is written in the law. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 5, You have heard that it, that it had been said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I send to you that you resist not evil, but whosoever will smite you on the right cheek, let him turn the, the other also. Whosoever looks upon this quotation will find that it is not addressed to in, individuals but was a rule for the direction of the judges in the case that came before them. The whole law of which it was a part was given to the Israelites only because of their unbelief and because they rejected God from being their sole king and judge. In this, as in many other things, we must believe that from the beginning it was not so. So Matthew 5, 30 and 39, you have heard that it was been said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And even this is still applicable today because people want to, like it says right here, they want to take vengeance into their own hands. But God tells us that we are to resist evil, right? Resist not evil. What does that mean? That means that we are to let things happen to us. Sometimes we pray, Lord, protect us, protect us. But he will protect us, of course. But we also have to let the, the, the evil get through and do its job, you know. Just like think about persecution. All of those people who died long ago by all those Roman leaders and the church who was persecuting and everything, they had this kind of faith that overcomes the world, that they didn't care to die for Christ, they didn't care they were persecuted and mistreated, they were killed alive, burned alive, put on the stake, drowned alive, burned alive, so many different things that they done to the Christians, but the Christians didn't give up their belief. And so us too right now, if we right now are not ready for that time, then it's going to show that we have our faith has been a wreck. That we haven't have the same faith that those murders did. So we cannot resist evil, you know. We're going to let things happen. Like those Christians didn't say, oh no, oh no, it's wrong to kill, so you don't do this. And as a matter of fact, there were some Christians that 
stop being Christians and submit it to the, the their persecutors and deny the faith in order for them not to die or their children and their wife and their families. So this will repeat itself. We're going to have to not resist evil, but let it happen. Any comments? <clears throat> well, like I said, when we're done with this one, it's... Like I know, like right now, it's uh, God says that vengeance is mine. And when we also look at, like even the nation of Israel, when they had to go into the when they went into the Canaan land, God told them to slew all his enemies. So, like I said, there's a we gotta understand the nature of how God actually treat uh, what what God is and everything. What this really means and everything. We have a lot to understand on what this law means because God told the nation of Israel to what execute the ones that God had closed probation upon. So. And it was from it was an order from God, so we gotta understand that God's judgments and everything, and how they're fulfilled when it's based on law is we got a lot more to understand. <clears throat> now I understand right now it's like when God says, "Vengeance is mine and everything," but right now it's like for example, let's say if something happens to someone, what would what would you do in that given time and everything? Like I'll give you an example of Abraham. We know Abraham was of God. And in Genesis chapter 14, or, uh, 14, beginning at verse 13, and remember, even with this book right now, we want to understand the full nature of law. And like I said, not even though this book has a lot of good things about the law, there's, there's always more to learn about the law. We cannot exhaust the extent of the law. And I'm reading what I said, There came one that had escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelled in the plains of Midian, uh, the Amorite, brother of Estol, the brother of Abner, Abner, and these were confederate with Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, who was taken captive? This was Lot. He armed, he armed his trained servants and bore in his own house 318 and pursued unto Dan. And he divided himself against them and he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto ha Havna, which he left, and which he left hand of Damascus, and he brought them back all his goods, and was brought back again his brother Lot, and his goods, and and the woman also, and the people, and everything. So we see right now here Lot, Lot, Abraham, and everything. He was a servant of the Lord, and everything. His who was taken captive his own brother by people that were evil and everything. And I know right now is he went to go what? He went to go aid his brother and everything and, and help someone that was actually in need and everything. So there might be sometimes we might help someone that is in need. Like for example, like even even in the Sabbath day, and God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We learned the fourth commandment. And on the Sabbath day, if someone is I know right now, like for example, let's say someone is injured on the Sabbath day. Are you going to not administer them, help them out, and everything? What if they? What if they're? You need to do something on the Sabbath day that might be. You might think, oh, I wouldn't normally do it on any other day, but on the Sabbath day, you may do that to alleviate someone's pain or something like that. So there might be some different circumstances that my intel what you might do so right now i see right now abraham he was a servant of the lord and everything at that time he had to go he didn't go look for the he didn't look for the fight or anything it's just it just happened that he had to get his brother and get his brother out of there and everything from a situation of some people that were being evil and everything so was that his brother that was yeah lot this was lot that he went to go lot get. was his nephew well, well yes well he got he went to go get his brother and everything so it's I, I assume this is Lot and everything because it said it, it took a lot. Lot was his nephew. Yeah, or well, nephew and everything. It says brother here, but I believe it was Lot and everything that, that he had to go retrieve there and everything. And he said he smote those men and everything. You know, so right now, and, and I would say he was normally he was following the Lord and everything. So I was I was you know in a case where he was not following the Lord, so the Lord was probably directing him to go get this person and everything out from that land and everything. So it was so like I said. So when a guy says vengeance is mine and everything, I'm not sure if you're not supposed to help the ones that are oppressed too. And everything. I think of yourself and help the ones that are actually oppressed. Just a room for thought when we look at this thing, man, because I, I found this a case in the Bible and everything, and I never knew this until a couple of years ago. This thing never crossed my mind when I when I look at it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
Whoever looks upon this quotation will find that it is not addressed to individuals, but was a rule for the direction of judges in the cases that came before them. The whole law of which was part was given to the Israelites only because of their unbelief and because they rejected God from being their sole king and judge. In this, as as many other things, we must believe that from the beginning it was not so. And Christ's work is always to bring men back to the beginning, to himself. The words of Christ I say unto you that you resist not evil. Taken in this, In this connection, page 79, show that his followers are not to have recourse even to course the law. Course the law. This especially what Christ has referenced to as the text verse follows. Chose. Matthew 540, if any man sue you at the law and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. How much less then should one take the initiative? and sue another at the law. And since even legal measurements in self-defense are forbidden by the gospel, which is the revelation of the commandment, how plain it is that one has no right to take things into his own hands to do anything in self-defense. And this brings me to a point that the Seventh Adventist General Conference, the main body of Seventh Adventists, have taken the pleasure of persecuting people who have the name of seven the Adventists on their churches and they have come and mistreat them I even saw a video I'm not telling you something I heard I saw a video where they came and removed everything that said seven the Adventists if it was signs if it was in a church they broke it took it away and don't these people read the Bible Right, we too are seven Adventists. Of course, we don't belong to the conference. But what kind of behavior is that? For them to come and tell them, you cannot have the name seven Adventists. And they already copyrighted it? Okay, pretty pharisaical. Because the name seven Adventists is supposed to be for everyone. It's a profession for anybody. Anybody who will come and accept these truths along with Jesus and the plan of salvation and everything else. It's a Seventh-day Adventist. It's not something you copyright and, oh, we can only be Adventists. And you got to follow our 28 fundamental beliefs, our Trinitarian belief, in order for you to be an Adventist. And so we are becoming totally without Christ. It is very common to hear this teaching called impractical, but the defining of defending the Lord is not laid upon us. He knew that he was saying what he was saying, and he meant what he said, and his own life furnished the example of his teachings. When an armed band came out to take him by violence, and Peter zealously undertook to defend him, and he rebuked him, saying, Dead I take the sword, shall perish with the sword. If there was ever a case of rights invaded in case of self-defense against injustice, oppression, and violence could be just justifiable, justifiable that was the one but he demonstrated his own teachings leaving us an example and as a matter of fact I think this is fine also in Matthew chapter 26 and he says I was among you teaching in the temples and you didn't took me in and then when Peter took out the sword also Jesus said these words which was that he could, he was able to command 12 legions of angels <clears throat> if he wanted to fight against them but Jesus Jesus did not resist evil. So he is our perfect example for us not to resist evil. 1 Peter 2, verse 23, When he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Someone is sure to be ready with the questions. What would you do in case a robber should assault you, demanding your money or your life? We need never borrow trouble from the future or speculate. <laughs> Page 80. How the precepts of Christ can be obeyed under various conditions if we believe grace will be given for the time of need. In the supposed case, it seems quite evident that the curse of wisdom will be to give the money and save the life. 
But suppose one resists in such a case. Let us make a comparison between him and the robber. If one objects to parting with his money, the robber may kill him and take him in and take it. In that case, the robber will be rightly called a murderer. It is a sordid, sordid murder. He has taken the, his victim's life for a paltry sum of money. But suppose the robber does not succeed in the object. Suppose his intended victim is a quicker and stronger man of the two and kills him instead. Is he not also a murderer? He has killed a man merely for a sum of money. The robber will kill him to get it. He kills the robber to save it. In either case, will be a life taken from money. Who can say that one is less guilty than the other? Self-defense does not seem so attractive when put in this form, does it? But the objector may say that it is not for money that the man kills the robber, but to save his own life. Very well, let it be so. Then the man takes upon himself the responsibility of deciding who ought to die and who ought to live. He acts on the assumption that his own life is worth more than the robber's and takes the case into his own hands, acting both as judge and executioner. This is something for us to think about. The commandment does not say you should not kill except in self-defense or under provocation. You should not kill anyone except a thief or a very bad man or one who you think is not as fit to live as you are. There is an exception, you shall not kill. Oh, there is no exception, you shall not kill. The whole question of self-defense or of standing for one's rights is settled by the statement, love seeks not her own, that defending of one's rights shows the absence of love. Where love is not, there is hatred, and hatred is murder, so we... <coughs> Go to page 81. So we cannot avoid the conclusion that self-defense is murder. The commandment, you shall not kill, forbids violence of any form or degree. No matter how many objections may arise, the fact is that the commandment is easy to keep when the love of God is in the heart. For 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. It is difficult and impossible to keep the law only when the law of God is not given a place in the heart. There is no death of cruelty of which human nature is not capable when it is not influenced by the law of God. And there is no measure of righteousness that is not possible where the love is given full sway. A deadly weapon. There are various kinds of weapons with which murder is committed. One may use a knife or poison, or among poisons there is some that are worse than others. The tongue is declared to be James 3 8, an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Can you read that, Ronnie, please? James from the Bible. James 3 8. Of the natural unregenerate, unregenerate man, it is said. Romans 3, 13. I'm going to read the whole verse. Where is that? James 1? James 3, 8, please. And then later I will read Romans 3, 10. <clears throat> but the tongue can no more tame. It is a unruly evil full of deadly poisons. Mm, mm, mm. Romans 3.10 as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Oh, 13, sorry. <laughs> their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet, shed, their feet are sweet, swift to shed blood. Destruction and mystery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. 
Now we know that what 